Hi, <clears throat> it's me again, and I'm doing a pre-recorded video because I'm not available to um, record one the same day that I upload it. So this is for the future, so I'm not going to mention too much that's going on currently because I just filmed another video. Um, I don't have my coffee. It's later in the day, so I have a Coke, which, you know, caffeine's caffeine. I should have coffee. Um, I have been working this morning and I have more dyeing and ironing to do this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I thought you might appreciate, I just started, I used to have a huge vintage apron collection and I've gotten rid of most of them, but some of them, and I used to wear them like when I did my gardening and around the house and we would wear them at our barn sales selling stuff. And I decided maybe a week or two ago that I would start wearing them sometimes when I'm dyeing. And this is one of my favorites, and it's totally vintage house coat. Um, I kind of like, I used to like the half aprons. As long as it has pockets, I really like it because I can slip my um, cell phone in there. Um, and that's why a lot of times I will wear the half aprons when I'm gardening because I have my um, cell phone in the pocket. And I can put my gardening gloves in there or, or whatever and kind of... Have something to wipe my hands on when I'm kneeling in the dirt and stuff but I started wearing some of these full-size aprons which I wear them when I'm canning and sometimes when I'm cleaning and it's funny because I had a, this one on the other day for the first time and everybody's like what are you doing I'm like I'm gonna use some of my vintage aprons I did purge a lot of my collection but I saved some of the favorites and like I said this one hmm, very very house coat pattern which I love. So it's hard to see because you can't see my whole, my whole me, the way that I'm sitting in this video. So yeah, so that's what this is because I'm working in my apron. And uh, I thought for this video, oh shoot, I forgot something because I do have um, a couple things to show you before I get to my theme. So hang on one sec. Okay, so. Um, what I thought I would do for this video is I have one sort of vintage antique sampler to show you. I have a old previous finish and then I'm going to kind of do a whip parade. It's not all of my whips and I didn't include the ones that I have really recently shown you in the last couple of videos. Um, some of them, a lot of them you have seen before, but I thought, who cares? Let's just put them all in one thing and we'll see what we get through. And, um, you know, this video could be shorter. It could be just as long. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I'm really busy. So I'm trying to, you know, my last video I did, I was trying to get through and I kind of did it as a normal size video. And, um, you know, I just don't have a lot of time this week because there's extra packed in besides, um, just the needle and flax work. So, um, the first thing I'd show you, cause I thought once in a while I'll show you some of my antiques. And like I said, I've been showing, um, sampler reference books that you can get and go through. And I thought I would show an antique. Now this I got on eBay earlier this year. Well, maybe last year I got it. I got it for $30, including shipping. And it was listed as vintage. I think it is an antique. And maybe when I show it, if some of my sampler people that know a lot more about samplers than I do can give me some hints on what they think, let me know. Um, so I don't think that it is a, you know, it could be vintage, but I don't know the age cause there's no date on it, but it's stitched in wool. Um, it looks Scottish. I don't think it's like a pattern that someone stitched. It is old and it was just kind of cool. And I thought for 30 bucks, it was a bargain. Now, when you're searching on eBay or Etsy or anywhere on the internet auction sites, um, for antique samplers. Um, there are some tips to really get some cheap pieces and there are tips, you know, you do have to be careful for fakes. I have not bought a fake yet. Um, you know, basically when you're looking for them, you have to be willing to take the risk, um, do a little homework. Um, you can always, if you're not sure, if maybe it's a stitch reproduction, Google and see if that is a pattern that has ever been released. Um, but one of the ways that you can get cheaper antiques is sometimes people do estate sales 
and they're not real ver well versed in samplers. And so they may kind of figure it's a sampler. Um, they aren't real attached to it. They aren't really experts in samplers or needlework. Many times they will call it the wrong name. So another search that you can do when you're looking for samplers on places like eBay is many times they will call cross stitch needlepoint or they will call it embroidery or they will just call it needlework because they just don't know this. You know, they're just not needlework people. And so sometimes that's where you find really good deals. And sometimes when there's buy it nows, those are the sellers that will take a lot less even than what they have stuff listed for because they're going to auctions and estate sales and they're just buying stuff and throwing it on eBay and they want to get rid of it. And if you offer them more than whatever they pay for it, um, a lot of times they're willing to reel and deal. You usually don't get from those sellers like, well, it's worth this. They don't care. So not just with samplers, but with a lot of things. If you look, if you see a listing you like, look at the sellers, other items they have for sale. If it's a real mishmash of things, they're typically not someone that specializes in any one particular area. So sometimes I do come across some very inexpensive antique and or vintage pieces. Um, on the other hand, when you're looking at eBay, sometimes you will see antique sampler and it's like, you know, an embroidery stitchery kit from the 20s or 30s and they want hundreds and hundreds of dollars for them and that's just not what they go for. So you get it the other way too. You get people listing things for way more than they're actually worth. So when you're starting to buy antiques or you're um, looking on that secondary market for vintage pieces, just the more you look and the more you research and the more you get to learn actual fair prices, not fair prices, what's a good deal, what are you willing to take a risk on? Um, this is one, like I said, it was a buy it now for 30 bucks. And I was willing to take the risk that it wasn't um, terribly old because I just liked it. So that being said, this is the piece that I bought and I'm trying to figure out how could I show this? I think you're gonna be able to see through it. but So it looks like it's Scottish. Um, it's definitely stitched in wool. Okay, so you have an alphabet. Shoot, I got something here. An alphabet and crowns, right? The name is kind of Scottishy to me. It's, um, is it Katie? Kate McBain. But this is the part that I loved. Look at those. Look at that. I mean, isn't that cool? So here's the full piece. And it's hem stitched. This is the back. I just thought it was cool colors and those like, I'm going to fold this. Those like medallion pieces at the bottom. How cool are those? Like total like wintry snowflakey things. They're neat. I don't think this is vintage. I think this is actually a later antique, like not an antiquey antiquey. <laughs> But it's it's pretty old. So I really don't think this is a um, reproduction that was stitched. I could be wrong. If there's some any tips you have for me, um, like I said, there's no year on it. There's no date anywhere. So just the girl's name. But I think that's really cute. What do you guys think? Let me get that framed. Okay, and then a previous finish, um, when I did my last video, I had gone down to my basement to get a Paulette Stewart a Plum Street piece that I did, and I have a few of these I've done, and it's in my basement, and I never display it, and it's full of dust, but this is um, Plum Street Samplers July. I think this might have been the first when they did that monthly, when she, uh, Plum, did I say Plum Street? Prairie Schooler. Um, when Prairie Schooler had all those monthly ones coming out, I was like, I'm going to do every month. And I started with July <clears throat> because, of course, that appeals to me the most. And I've done December and January. And I have the other charts. And my thought was I would do them all. This is 32 count, um, just antique white linen. Yep, antique white linen. And um, I thought I, if I did them all on 32 count and framed them, I think this is just 8 by 10 that I could just swap them out every month in the same spot. And I don't know, I think I may still do that. Some of these charts are super, super cute. 
they're all super cute, but I love this one the most. So I need to put that one out for summer. Okay, so I'm going to do a little, look at my hair. Eey, good Lord. Okay, I'm going to do a little whip parade. What do we think of that? It's depressing that I have this many whips. Whatever. Okay. Oh, I'm going to start with this. So I pulled out, I pulled out two of my very oldest whips and this is going to crack you up. So this first one is my oldest, technically my oldest whip, my oldest stitched piece that I do at some point intend on finishing. And there's a funny story about this. So I borrowed this pattern. Um, when Bellany was in preschool, so that would be 2004, I think, four and five, um, my friend Sally, we did a preschool co-op. So basically, and they don't have them here anymore. Now the preschools are kind of um, fashioned like daycares and any preschool that you go to, whether it's affiliated with a school or it's private, they offer it Monday through Friday, long hours. There's kids that go there every day like, like um, daycare which is not what we wanted. And we still had a preschool that was half day, traditional preschool, but it was a co-op because there was only one, they could only afford one teacher. And you have to have so many adults for so many kids legally. So basically a co-op is, um, you had to volunteer days to stay with the kids and be a helper um, it was two half days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from like 9 to 1130. It was fantastic. Um, so the parents would have to rotate. There'd have to be an extra adult helper. Like there was had to be one adult for so many kids. So there was usually two volunteers that would come. And my friend Sally had to come. Her son Owen is in my daughter's class. And she had to come every time because he was not potty trained. And he was a big boy. He's a little bit older than my daughter. And she was so miffed because she had to go every single day to preschool because they would not let you drop off your kid if they weren't potty trained. They had to be free of a diaper. So she was so funny. And that's actually where I met her because she would sit in the back corner and bring her crafts. And she would bring her craft magazines and she would do, you know, anything she could do with hands. She'd bring big buckets of things to organize and she'd be sitting in the back corner with her because she'd have to sit there with open. <laughs> So, of course, she and I immediately hooked up. She's one of my closest friends. We're still very good friends now. And she used to, we used to go over and, you know, the kids would play together. And she and I would hang out and craft and do all these fun things. And she had a, she was not cross-stitching at the time. I was, but she had previously cross-stitched. And she had this piece hanging in her hallway and I, or her entryway. And I just loved it because years before I had done a lot of these patterns. And this is one that I have not done. So she's like, oh, I stitched it and I finished it and you can borrow the pattern, but I kind of like to keep on, you know, a hold of my patterns. I'm like, okay, we still joke because I still have not given her back the pattern. It is like, you know, 17 years I've had this pattern, which she doesn't care. We just laugh because I'm like, I still have it. You are getting it back when I finish that thing. <laughs> so I still have it. It is a borrowed pattern. This is not a habit. If I ever do borrow a pattern from you. <laughs> This just happened when we had toddlers and small kids and it, you know, months turned into a couple years and she's like, God, I don't care. But one day this is going to show back up at her house and it's going to be hilarious. So, but she already has it stitched. She's not waiting for it to stitch. She just keeps it in her stash. So this is told in a garden and this is the garden. Okay. And her husband is a woodworker and he made a frame, a beautiful hunter green frame for it. And I just had to do it. And I did not, I have not finished it, but I'm going to finish this. I don't know if I'll hang it up because it's not really my style anymore. This is on Ada, like a brown Ada. And, you know, like I'm missing, I don't know if this is lettuce or cabbage. I'm missing one thing there. I'm missing, I think, part of the, there's a part of the turnips that I'm missing, and then all these hollyhocks up here. So it's really almost done. <laughs> I loved stitching told in a garden, and I've been a little jealous. Fauna has been restit or starting to stitch ones she never stitched, and they're some of the most fun patterns to do. They're very, like... I don't know, maybe comfort stitching for me because I did a lot of these in the 80s and 90s. 
and I really get tempted to go back and stitch one like Anna is. The only thing is, I know I wouldn't display it. My style is a lot more um, decorating wise in my house. I have a lot of antiques and old stuff and not quite as much. I don't want to sound like I'm slamming it, but they're kind of cutesy, right? And they're a little, they're beautiful. I just don't know if I stitch them, even that one, if I will actually hang it anywhere. But they're so fun to stitch. It really tempts me to pull one out. Um, a couple of the ones that she has that she wants to work on, I'd also like to do too. I still have them. I have the, some of the old kits. And um, you never know. You may see me. If I'm in a real slump and I just want to do something fun, they are a ton of fun to stitch. I loved doing them. I also did a lot of those Diane Gravener ones, those Amish ones. The Amish stitching was very cool and very fun. And I have a couple of those that I would like to um, stitch. In fact, recently I had one. It was a winter one with a buggy and a Christmas tree and a buggy driving towards a house. I'll have to pull that up. Maybe we'll do a vintage stitching um, video one time with all these old patterns. Um, that one I had a lot, a big start on it. And it was, um, I think it was on Ada. And I somewhat recently threw it out because I thought if I'm ever going to do this again, I'm going to do it on linen. And I just might. So that's an old whip. That's my oldest, I think. So that would be from like two, maybe 2003. Uh, this is an older whip. I debate whether I should finish it again. It's not totally my style, but I originally started stitching this um, as a seasonal piece, even though it's big. So this is Little House Needleworks. Um, crud, what's that series called? I don't know. It's a series. So I started doing them one at a time. Right. So I have four of them done. And I think this is just a 32 count raw linen. And again, Vana had stitched. She created on her. She did do this. Was it? I can't remember what this. I don't have the patterns here. Because I don't, I don't I haven't started the next one. Um, she designed like a bunting and star border to go around it, which I thought was really cute. And that was kind of my intention. And then I was just going to frame it and display it in the summertime with patriotic stuff. So the debate is, do I continue this and just finish it? They were fun to stitch and very quick. Do I continue it on 32 and just do it and do my original plan? Do I restart since they work quick and maybe do it on a linen that's more enjoyable for me now? I don't know. So that's why that kind of hangs out. I have another old one that I think I showed on my Instagram. Yep. I have one other really old whip. That I think I showed on my Instagram live. I think I know I did. Don't know where the pattern is. This one I am going to restart. This one's on 32, and I ran out of one of my over dies. It's la di da. I don't have the chart, I just have my working copy. It's called a Savior's Love. And I know I have a ton stitch, but I feel like I really want to redo it. I changed the color of the school. Um, to one of the salmony DMCs. Let me see. I have this one here. 3328. More of a pinky, pinky salmony color. And I don't, I don't know what it was called for. I'm not pulling that part out. But I ran out of, um, I think Garden Gate is what I did the words in. And I ran out and I'm really curious if even now, well, first of all, I'm really close on running out of room here. Um, and I also don't know if the dye lot has changed, so that could be an issue, but I loved the, and it's la di da a savior's love. It's cute. Oh, it's an older la di da pattern. So again, you might have to go through to your uh, needle workshop and ask them. I don't think it's at the distributors or anything anymore, so they may have to go through Lori at la da to um, get copies of that. Because again, I don't think her stuff goes out of print. I don't know. Okay, so what do I have? I have a huge laundry basket full of stuff here. So one thing that I would love to get back to this year is Coming to America, Women of the Mayflower by Brenda Gervais. 
I purchased the kit, obviously, because that's all you can do or you could do. They don't sell it anymore. It came with the little corner gauge. Um, it came with this. I definitely want to do this year, the supplemental pattern. And I keep forgetting it because I have it in the Coming to America box. Um, it came with fabric with William Bradford's journal writings on it, which is cool because William Bradford is um, my 13th or 11th. He's my great grandfather. He's on my family tree. So yes, I am a William Bradford descendant. A little label. I don't know. Where's my little, oh, my, the needle minder I got. You got either a boy or a girl and I got the girl. So this is all I had started. Again, I did, I ordered my kit from Kitten Stitcher and at that time, Vintage Country Mocha was really hard for them to get their hands on. So some of the, it was a pre-order. And then when they went to um, fill those orders, they couldn't get from Zweigart the Vintage Country Mocha. The shops couldn't get enough of it to kit them. So um, Teresa did XJU Designs. And I can't remember what color she substituted it for. And it's a beautiful linen. It's very fun to stitch on. I'm just not sure I like how the threads. Now I've stitched, I mean, I've put a few hours into this. I've got, um, you know, I've got some of the border and I've got the waves and stuff. Not a ton to where I couldn't restitch it. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I will just keep going with this. Um, or maybe restart it. I don't know. I don't know. I hate to. But now I, I do have vintage country mocha. So I could do what Brenda Gervais called for. Because that right now is not hard to get. So we will see. And there's enough of that x Designs linen there that I could, um, you know, cut off the bottom and do some ornaments or something with it. It's nice linen. If you haven't tried her hand dyed linen yet, it's... It's only the stuff I've used. That's the only time I've used it, and I really like it. It's nice. So, I've shown this one before. This is a Scarlet Letter Whip, and this is Fanny Hancock. And this one, you can still get this um, anywhere that sells Scarlet Letter or on her site. Um, this is my start, and this is on Vintage Country Mocha. So I've got that. You know what? I think my battery, hold on one second. I'm going to pause it because I think my battery is low. Hold on. Okay. My battery is low. Normally a whip parade is going to be really quick. I don't know if I pause this and charge it, if it'll stay paused or if it'll like hibernate and screw up the video. I tried to um, run my extension cord and plug in but on the tripod it it's too heavy it's like swinging my phone so we'll see what we can get through I may have to keep pausing and checking my battery and I'm gonna kind of try and go quick because I really shouldn't I shouldn't be doing this I don't have a lot of time and I have 23 minutes so far so let's see if we can get through another 10 or 15 minutes with 12% of battery okay Scarlet House Rachel Howells I have shown this whip before and this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And that's what I've got done. Quite honestly, I forget about this one a lot <clears throat> and really need to um, remember to pull this out and work on it. Okay, I show, well, a lot of, I've shown a lot of these before. This one is Eliza Knight by Hands Across the Sea. And I am not sure. I don't remember what I'm stitching this on. I'm not sure if I ever wrote it down. It could be an R&R. &R. I don't think it's one of mine. 
it's not one of mine. I think it's R&R. &R. So that's all I've got done. That one's going to be really pretty. It's all greens and golds and very pretty. I kind of would like to have some different um, colored and types because like everybody else, I'm always drawn to the same type of sampler and they all kind of look the same. So it would be nice to have some variety. Um, this one I started this year. This is Northumberland House. This is a PDF from Etsy. Shoot. Ah, Caroline Scott, 1821. Super cute. I had decided to start this because it's not terribly big and thought I could just bust right through it. No, I get no stitching time. So this is on 90s Nirvana, which is needle and flax, a stained linen, and that's all I have done. You know, I wasn't like this. I don't know what kind of world we live in that Laura Duet is finishing things, and I am doing Laura starts where I just have a little motif and I move on. I don't know. Maybe it's like Freaky Friday. Maybe we somehow switch socks. This is a favorite whip. I did this the minute it was a PDF um, download and I haven't worked on it in a bit, but I've got to finish it. Anna Sophia Bircham, My Hands Across the Sea. And Ellen Chester started this way after I did and has already completed it and moved on and is stitching something else I would, Queenstown I would like to stitch. So this is 40 Count Creams Weigart. And I have a little bit longer. I was trying to work down to the peacock. This is very fun to stitch, but it's very slow going. There is a lot of color changes. Especially, I don't like, I think I've said this before, I don't love stitching variables. And um, I love, it's one of my favorite motifs on a sampler, but I don't love stitching them. And I think it's part of it's the color changes that just drive me bonkers. So that one, when I work on, I really have to be focused and super, super pumped about cross stitch too. I can't be tired and work on that because I think that's going to be like a super show piece when it's done. This one I also started on 90s Nirvana recently, and this is uh, Mary Wigglesworth. It goes across the sea. That's it, folks. That's it. That's all I have going on that one. You know, one thing I have to say about my fancy project bags is um, they're easy to get in and out of. And see what's in there. This bag is a Hobby Lobby. It's in the, like, stitching section. It's just a little, I think they're like three or four bucks. They're kind of fun. This one is Butternut Tavern. That will definitely be a finish this year because it's very fun to stitch. It's very fall colors. So I haven't stitched on it in a little bit, but um, it's Stacy Nash. It's very cute. I love that um, orange daisy border. So that is on my list to work on this year. Not all of these will I pick up this year. Where do I put all this stuff? I don't think I have a big enough table for a book. And I have to start throwing them on the floor. <gasps> this is a Stitch Folk bag. This is my first Stitch Folk bag I bought from Barry. It's gotta have a fast trigger finger to get one. I think I have three now, three of hers. I have the little Laura and then the one that she, you didn't have to have the fast trigger. All right, well, <clears throat> thank goodness this video is gonna be uploaded in a couple weeks because my camera stopped recording while I was talking. I didn't get much farther, but I think it must stop when my battery's low. So I charged it for a bit, popped a couple pieces of sushi in my mouth for lunch that I had in the fridge, 
and I will have to edit this video. So now my camera angle is probably all different. And, whatever. Okay. So when my camera stopped, I was showing you a um, Stitch Folk bag that I have, one of the three that I have. And um, I was showing you my favorite, Brenda Gervais, that I wanted to do for years since it came out and have not. I just started it last year. And it is grateful, thankful, and blessed. I should hold that longer. Um, and I really don't have much started on it. I'm using called for linen, called for thread. It is, uh, I think 40 count. Is it 40 count? Yeah, 40 count Ren by Picture This Plus. And it's very, very faint. I've seen a lot of people stitch this and comment on how the colors don't show up terribly well. Sometimes, um, my last video I showed blue skin and that's how Paulette had designed that one. It's kind of a very faint faded look to it and it turned out looking okay and I think the same thing with Brenda Gervais you just kind of gotta trust it I've seen some people change some colors and sometimes that's what makes it hard is that you're stitching on stuff that doesn't really pop and wondering do I continue but you just gotta trust the designer and um, it's a beautiful piece so I think I'm gonna stick with the called for colors and just keep on going um, the next one I've shown you before, it is an Irish sampler by Cross Stitch Antiques. And this is Elizabeth Martin, 1789. And I'm doing this on 40 Count Brea. And that's all I have. So, it works up pretty quickly but those letters do take a little bit longer than you would think they take a little more focus than you would think because they're the, at least that top band i'm working on so i haven't picked that one up in a while uh this is another whip i have shown before i definitely would like to pick this up this year because i don't think it'll take long to get going and finished on it this is um the scarlet house mary betchel and I think I was working on this around Christmas time last year. Because it's kind of got Christmassy colors. It might have even been a Christmas start. I don't remember. But this is 40 Count Cream and DMC. It was charted in silk, but I decided to go DMC. And I'm using the red variegated DMC for the red in it, which is, I think, 115. Let's see. Yep, 115. It's a very pretty variegated red. Most of the DMC variegated ones I don't particularly care for, but that one, look how pretty that is. It's nice. So this one's fun. And she charted it in classic color works. Um, Yeah, the silk by Classic Color. I was going to say, I think these are the silk colors. <clears throat> so, and that is one silk I've never used and don't have any of, so DMC works fine. Uh, this one's in one of my Fat Quarter Shop bags. I was going to mention on my last video, and I guess I should mention it here as a side note. Um, two videos ago, I think number 14 or 15, I did a giveaway for Fat Quarter Shop quilt pieces, and I'm not going to draw the names for those until my next live video because it hasn't quite been a week or it's been about a week since I did that video, and a lot of people don't watch within the first week, so I want to give enough people a chance to comment. So if you want to be entered in that drawing, go back two videos, and uh, the word you use is so, S-E-W, and that there's a Fat Quarter Shop um, giveaway on that video. So, not now. So you'll have a long time to watch and comment on that one. This one you saw me start earlier this year. This is, um, I did this around Valentine's Day. Heartstring Samplery Handprint on My Heart. And I believe when I showed it, I was like, oh, I'm going to finish this this weekend. Nope, 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 nope. I just have a couple little things to do and then I can sew it into a pillow. 
So, and I honestly, I just keep forgetting about it. <clears throat> and that's um, Dirty Teacup and Anchor. And the red Anchor threads. This one, what is this one? Oh. See, on top, you're seeing a lot of the ones I've worked on recently. This is Kezia Keja. Kesha, Kesha, Kesha Turnock. <clears throat> I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, I love this sampler, and I haven't worked on it in a little bit. This is um, Sassafras samplers from Sassy Jacks, and I'm doing this on Alcott, and that's what I have done. This one's fun. <clears throat> Let's see. What else? Another Fat Quarter Shop bag. Tell me I love these bags. And really, I could fit more than what I have in here. Anyway. Oh, this is one that I started and then I just, I think I just started it one night in the fall or maybe around the time I did my um, Scarlet Letter Parade. This is an exemplary pattern. This is, um, oh no, this might have been around when I did my yearly plans my, in January. Um, this is, the picture came off, Sarah Rogers. It's an old one. I was kind of in the mood to do a band sampler, so I'm like, well, I'll pull that out and start it now. You can still get this kit on uh, Exemplary's Etsy shop. And I barely started it. I mean, I think that's probably why I've never shown it to you. Because I just did a very quick start on it. On Dirty Teacup. Get ready. Woo! I just decided to pick it up and start the little bands. <clears throat> I love that one, though. I have not done a band sampler yet, so that would be my first. It's my first band sampler. Oh shoot, I gotta put it right there. <clears throat> what do we have here? And another back quarter shot pack. Oh, this one I, I think last time I had said, well I know, because I just filmed it like, you know, a day ago. Um, you know, Hannah Lancaster is being released over, or, well, now when you see this, it will have already been released. And it really made me, because it's so many people's unicorns, um, I need to get back out Anne Rayner because it's my number one unicorn. And um, it was given as a gift to me, the pattern. And it really is one of my all-time favorite. God, it's wrinkled. Um... It's one of my favorites and I need to give it more attention very soon. I've really been in the mood to pick this up, but I don't have any, I don't have time. That will be done, no doubt. All of my whips will be done, but that one is a high priority. I think I showed this on my um, Patriotic. Summer at Hollyberry Farm. It's one I've wanted to do for years and I very rarely get to it. And it is another dirty teacup start and that's all I have done. So that won't be done this summer. I don't even know if it'll get attention this summer because I've got other ones I'm focused on. Um, another fat quarter shop bag. I really need to put multiple projects in these bags because they hold a lot. This is, I love this one too, Elizabeth Cheatham, 1824. And I'm doing this on 40 Count Cream by Zweigart. And this is what I have. Oh. It's very fun to stitch. 
happy colors. And I'd love to get down to um, this band here. Looks like a ton of fun stitch. <clears throat> I get in scarlet letter moves too. So that's a lot of times when I pull these out. And lately I've been in a Plum Street mood. So that's why I've, stuff like this and Anne Rainer haven't come out lately. The samplers haven't. And I also started for my Mania. Um, what one did I start? The Scottish one. I can't remember. Whatever. This one actually, okay, here's another Scarlet Letter. This one calls to me all the time, and I do pull this out from time to time. So this is Mary Bailey. This will be on my wall at some point. And this is a 36 count antique ivory. And I've gotten a little farther than probably when I started doing these videos. I'm over to the house and that's kind of where I'm trying to, this band here with the house and stuff is some very heavy stitching. And everything else is kind of like little motifs that I could tackle a chunk at a time. So I'm trying to work to this and really get this done. And then I can work on over one once in a while, or I can come down here and do some of these things that won't, they're not quite as stitch heavy. So I very often get in the mood for that one. Especially when I want to do a real pretty reproduction. This is another one that's fun to stitch. This is Hands Across the Sea, Elizabeth Harding. Love this one. I love this. This is so fun to stitch on. It's big, but it doesn't, it just works up very quickly. I can't believe how quickly it feels like it works up. Now, there is a lot of over one words. So, you can, I wouldn't do them all at once, but you can definitely get a lot of stitching going and then just do the over one when you're really mentally prepared for it. But I love stitching on this. And even though it's wide, you know, like when you're doing all these Algerian eyelets, you can just really get through them. And the same thing with just doing this part of the border, it just, it works up really quick. It's pretty consistent there, or so far it has been. Same thing with this little strawberry border. It's just real easy to get going on. And that's another one where I'd like to get down towards the house so that I can work. Okay, my camera stopped again. Apparently it's my Get this stay <clears throat> I reached my maximum recording time so I gotta hurry up and get through this because now I'm gonna have to splice three videos together okay so I just showed Elizabeth Harding blah 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 it's fantastic it's fun to stitch what I, was, I think what I was saying when the camera went off is I'm trying to get down to that house <clears throat> and that is another one that calls to me quite a bit I'm already having quite a all right, I'm almost, I only have a couple more, so this is good. This is my other berry bag. Um, oh, we looked at this before. I was working on Keeper of the Pins. And all I've done is um, this pillow. And I think last time I had shown I was going to finish this on that weekend and I never got to pick it up at all. So I have not touched this since the last time I showed it. Um, but I'd like to get those done. Very fun. Um, yeah, so I have that. Oh, this one I keep thinking, it's not calling to me, but I just keep thinking I'm so darn close. I really need to pull it out. And I was just thinking this the other day that I should work on this if I get some time, since I'm getting some help to get caught up on um, 
work and I'm not going to use that help on the weekends. I'm going to try and take some half days and maybe get in some fun time and maybe some stitching time in the evenings. So I need to finish Ann Morrison. And the reason I haven't picked it up is because I do kind of have to focus and I really am just too tired for a lot of focus stitching. So who knows? Maybe I will be able to because I have not had a finish this year and I need one. So that's what I have done on Ann Morrison. And I'm not terribly far. It's just that there's a lot of eyelet stitches. And so that's why I'm like, I got to pay attention. They're not hard, but I do have to focus a little bit. And... Um, Basically, what's left is a lot of the eyelet stuff. So, um, I might be able to get that done. This, that might be my first. It's June, and I don't have a finish yet. Oh, retirement. That's when I'll be stitching again. I had a good little run there when my kids were not babies and approaching teenagers before I started doing my linen. I did have time on the weekends to stitch and now I don't. So this one's another one. If I really had, I should have finished this a year ago. If I really had time to focus, Alice Sarah Dennis. I love this chart. I love this sampler. I've shown it before. I have a lot done. I do have quite a bit left to go, but I mean, come on. You know, I could at least pull this out and work on the border sometimes. It's just a basic strawberry border. And I've said before, I have a frame that it'll fit in. So I don't know what my deal is, because as soon as I finish it, <clears throat> it could actually go up on my wall. And it's beautiful. So that is one. This is a bag I made myself years ago. Oh, and that's it. That was all I had in my bag. So now I've only been recording this section for like four minutes. So I have no idea um, how long this video is. Look at this apron. It's got like such a long neck on it that it just kind of sags. And there it doesn't like tie or anything. You just, you know, hang it on your... I kind of wish it would go up a little bit. There we go. I'll just lay it there. But it hangs low for saggy breasted women. I don't know. <laughs> It just hangs like really low, but it's fine because it's got a pocket. This is so, you know, aprons really are a good utilitarian thing. I don't know why women ever really kind of stopped wearing them. They're great. They save, they save my sweatpants from getting stains. <laughs> um, okay. So I don't know when I'll be back. I think it's within two weeks. It could be one week. It could be two weeks. Um, but I definitely won't have to do a pre-recorded. I don't think. If there's some extra delay, I'll let you know on Instagram when my next video will be. And um, yeah, so as far as work is concerned, um, hopefully you're watching this and you have been waiting for an order for a long time that you have received. If you have not received an order that you've been waiting a long time for, there is a very good reason for it. Not <sighs> Anyway, this is going to be number four. My phone is going crazy and I can't delete any videos because they're waiting to be uploaded. Um, anyway, that's it. Um, if you have been waiting a long time and you haven't received your order yet, there's a good reason for it. So um, it will be coming soon. And it's not because I'm not working like a dog to get it out. Um, it's probably because I either don't have the linen yet, I don't have the 40 count, or you are just in with a large pile of people and I'm working to plug, plug away at it and get through it all. So I think that's it. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do for my next video. I have a couple, I have a few weeks to think about it. So this will be fun. Maybe we'll come back with a bang. And next time, rather than Coke, I will be back to my coffee because I will be recording in the morning again. So, yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. So I guess I'm going to have to jump off the crazy train and go back to work. This is kind of work, right? Kind of. So, um, yeah, I will talk to you guys in probably two weeks. 
and just watch my Instagram. Um, if there's a delay longer than two weeks, I'll let you know. So that's it. Take care. Bye.